Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, great to be with you today. Thanks for taking your time to have a moment, a devotional moment in God's Word with me. And uh, you might be hanging out at your home or in the workplace, drinking a little cup of coffee. And um, it's just good for us to lean into God and to hear what He has to say to us every day through His Word. So we're going to do that today. We're in Daniel chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, you can open up to Daniel chapter 5. And... If you've been joining us in the book of Daniel, you know that we were introduced to a new character uh, in our previous devotion, and uh, this is Belshazzar, who is most likely the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And, you know, he's a bad boy. Uh, he's, he's having a, a huge rager with his friends, uh, a thousand lords, and, you know, in disdain towards the Hebrews, he is called for all of the vessels that were used in their temple to worship God, uh, which had been taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. Um, he's called for them to be pulled out of the treasury and then used in this, you know, this kegger, this rager that he was throwing. And um, this was like a slight against the Hebrew people and against their God. And it did not go well for him, for sure, because the Bible says in Daniel chapter 5, verse 5, Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace opposite the lampstand. And the king saw the hand as it wrote. Then the king's color changed and his thoughts alarmed him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. So you got the picture, right? I mean, this is uh, one of those profound stories in, in the book of Daniel and like I said, this king's throwing a big party. He's been, you know, he's disregarded the Hebrew people. He's offended their God. And while he's throwing this, this, this you know, big party, thinking that he's, he's all that, like he's the king, this crazy thing happens. He sees across the room on the plaster wall next to where the lampstand was at. So, you know, all this happened in a place where everyone could see it. This hand appears, you know, and um, for you older people, I know you think of you think of the Adams family and that character hand that was just a hand that was moving around and doing things and insane picture, right? This hand with fingers all of a sudden begins to write on the walls, and this was so disturbing to the king that the scripture says he obviously his thoughts alarmed him, his knee, his limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. Some people say uh, in the original language, this is like he emptied himself, right? I mean, he, he emptied himself. He wet his pants. Like he, he was so frightened. He was so afraid. He was so scared. Um, this was a moment, a sobering moment for him in the midst of, you know, this, this situation where he felt like he was the most powerful person on the face of the planet. He could do whatever he wanted to do. You know, he could call the shots and get his way. He had all the money, all the influence, all the authority, surrounded by people who were worshiping him to this place where he, he disregarded the, the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And, and then this radically sobering moment right here when God moves. God shows up on the scene. You know, um, maybe in a different way that's happened to you in your life. Maybe, you know, you were calling the shots, you were running the show, and, and you thought you were all that, and you really had life your way, and then all of a sudden, God stepped in, and he stepped in in a very sobering way. He stepped in with some sort of revelation, probably not a hand writing on the wall, but the conviction of his Holy Spirit, circumstances that have been divinely designed by God um, to, to bring you down, in a sense, so that he could lift you up, to take you to rock bottom so that you could discover his grace. Uh, you know, those are that sobering work of God is not something to be disregarded or minimized. And sometimes in our current Christian culture, you know, we present a, a form of Christianity that really isn't biblical Christianity. You know, we turn God into a self-help God 
We turn God into a method or a way to become rich or um, to live a, a full, satisfied life. And, and what we forget is that the, the pathway to meeting God begins with repentance. It begins with brokenness. It begins with a, a conscience that becomes pierced and pricked by the power of the Holy Spirit. This certainly is what happened when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. You remember that as he shared the truth, spoke the word of God, um, expressed the gospel in mighty terms, the people were so convicted. The Bible says they were pierced to their hearts. They were pierced to their hearts. All that deception in that moment was cut through. And that's what's happening to Belshazzar. Right, he's having a moment, by the way, it's too late for him, but he's having this moment where all of that deception is being cut through literally by the hand of God. You should check out all the times the Bible mentions the hand of God or the, the fingers of God writing. It's an interesting study. Um, all that to say today, you know, don't despise those moments where God speaks so powerfully into your life that it cuts through, right? And it, it causes your heart in that moment to become tender and raw. And you realize you can see things for what they really are in that moment. What God is calling you to is repentance and obedience. In those moments, we can hear so distinctly, but if we don't respond in obedience, we can go right back to the previous deception. Father, we pray that you would help us to be responsive to the working, the speaking of your Holy Spirit in our lives, those sobering moments, God, when you get a hold of us. Help us to not disregard them. Help us not to go back to ways that were, um, that were not in alignment with your will. I pray today, God, for those of us that you're speaking to, that we would say yes, amen, and walk in obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.